Hi and welcome to Intuitive Knits. My name is McKenna and this is my little corner of the interwebs where I talk about all of my knitting and crocheting and making adventures. So um, today is going to be a little different than my normal vodcast episode. Today we are going to do um, summer plans because I am currently in Whip City. And I just think that's a little a little lame, a little boring for you probably to look at the nets that I've been knitting for the last mm, month and yeah, and there's like this much progress. <laughs> so yeah, I thought we would do something a little different. Mowgli. <laughs> she's been laying on my, wait, do we have this? No, oh, she's being defensive about it. She's laying on this my sweater that I've been working on. I do have arm. If you're curious about sleep, that's what it's looking like. Not to give too much away, but that's what it looks like. Um, that will be in the next vodcast, but I was working on it this morning and so she slept on it, of course, or fell asleep on it, I guess. <laughs> and since I started talking, she just woke up. It's like, what now, huh? So yeah, so today we're going to be talking about summer plans, summer knits, all that jazz. I don't have like a ton planned, but I do have some things planned. I don't know if I'll do them all. I don't know if I'll get to them all and I don't know if I'll finish them all by the time fall rolls around, but damn be it if I don't try. So let's get to it. Um, I don't know if you watch that like real, like that woman on Instagram that she does like outfits and stuff and she goes, let's do it. I don't know if you know that, but <laughs> if you did, that's what just played in my brain. I said, let's get to it. <laughs> let's do it. Water first. Okay. So first up, the first thing that's going to get cast on is something that's already been casted on <laughs> and ripped back. So I got impatient and really wanted to work with this yarn that I had over dyed. Now, I think I mentioned in one of the previous episodes, like why I over, I know I did somewhere, but I don't know which one, <laughs> uh, where I talked about why I, I over dyed this yarn. It had nothing to do with the yarn dyer, nothing to do with the color in and of itself. The color in and of itself was beautiful. It just didn't work with my complexion in a way that I knew I would end up wearing it and the yarn content is the reason why I bought it in the first place it's because I was like wow it's so special it's like a cotton and silk blend it's just amazing <laughs> so soft perfect for summer but the color really didn't suit me and it's one of the only colors I really don't think suits me um and so I decided to try over dyeing it and it turned into this beautiful, like silvery purple. I'll show it to you. Why am I explaining it? That's the wrong bag. It's the right bag. This is a little purse that I picked up from a market one, one year, I think two years ago, a year ago. And 10 euros. This is, I will say, every once in a while you find a gem where you're like, that is extremely underpriced um, in the crafting world, you know? So I, I get it. We feel the need to like lower the price of our craft in order to compete. But, and I mean, of course I was extremely happy and floored. I have to, oops. I messed something up. There we go. Floored that this, beautiful bag was so inexpensive and very like quite frankly way below the price that it should have been but um the woman who made them she makes them in her free time she's uh in Renta. she's on um retired just does it for fun and i get that but at the same time it's just amazing Funny story, I got this bag and one day later I was out with um, 
like out for a beer with one of my friends and her like in Germany we have these really tall glass beer glasses like really tall ones and they're quite skinny and just boop, the whole thing right into this bag I think I was and my knitting was in there it was my very hungry caterpillar sweater it was a Monday sweater but I modified it um that was in here <laughs> I was like oh no and it was a uh, banana weizen which is like banana um I don't know if you would say banana juice it sounds gross banana juice and beer like wheat beer together it's really good if you don't know this in Germany we have something that's called cola weizen and it's coca like it's coca-cola or some sort of pop a uh, dark pop um or soda if you live in the south and then it's wheat beer like a like a wheat beer and those two things together sounds absolutely disgusting is extremely tasty so don't knock until you try it but <laughs> the banana uh banana beer that she was drinking tipped completely over on the table and just spilled right into this bag days after I got it. <laughs> and so, yeah, I, I definitely had to wash it out a little bit and no harm to it has come, but <laughs> whenever I use this bag, it still kind of smells a little bit like banana. It doesn't smell like beer though, that's good. <laughs> Anywho, well, this is the yarn. So, as you can probably see, it's kind of like, yeah, it's pretty true to color. That's not bad. It's a little bit, I think maybe rosier, like a little bit more pinky and on camera than in uh, real life. But for the most part, that's pretty good. It's pre pretty true. And it's kind of like this silvery purple now. Um, still has the softness that it had when it was that beautiful dusty rose color but or not even a dusty rose just like a like a creamy very beautiful powdery pink color but that's not my not my color <laughs> peach fine pink no um and then I had decided to just cast it on because I was impatient and I really wanted to see what it looked like knitted up and all I have so far is believe it or not this is hey this is the waist so it's obviously knit flat back and forth and i had decided to go with a quite simple tank top um oh i didn't talk about what i'm wearing we'll get to that next um just a very simple tank top and i recently <laughs> i wish you could see her she's so funny she's like cleaning herself as she's sitting up like a person. Classic. I recently purchased this book, uh, pattern book from the 80s. I should have probably pulled up the pattern and marked it before getting on here. But you know, we're on the fly here. And I, I purchased it for this Matisse. Wait, let me show you that first. That is somewhere like right here. I purchased it first for this Matisse um, inspired pullover or jumper and um, it, like the patterns in it, there's so many that I just, I love. It's so great. Um, the book is called, because someone might ask, it's called The Sweater Book. <laughs> and it says 50 original hand knits by top designers. It's edited by Amy Carroll. Carroll with two R's and two L's. Okay, and C. So, if you are interested, I got this on World of Books, WAB, and um, yeah, it's it's awesome. I will say the size inclusivity is <laughs> like really sketch. Um, some things have quite a few sizes, nowhere near the size inclusivity that we have in patterns today. Um, but some of them do have multiple sizes, 
like your standard, maybe small to large. Um, but this one just so happens to only have one size and that size just so happens to be my size. So <laughs> I got lucky, otherwise you would have to do some math. But uh, this is the pattern I've decided on. <laughs> I will not be doing the pineapples, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but this is the pattern I decided on. It's called pineapple, but mine will not be called pineapple. Um, and I'm basically just using it for the basic tank top structure. I really liked the, I'm pretty sure that's gonna be some sort of garter bump um, edge. And I'm doing this uh, instead though, instead of stockinette, I've decided I wanna do some sort of like basket weave or some sort of pattern with knits and pearls. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I think I'm gonna do like maybe broken ribs. So like I'll have one row of knit in between every couple rows of some sort of design. I don't know yet. I think I wrote something down. Maybe I wrote it down and put it in here. That would be ideal. If I did that, oh yeah. There's the tag. Oops. Um, two pearl, one knit. Okay, like, so one knit, two pearl, two. Yeah. Knit one, pearl two. And then four times. And then I'm going to do the fifth row is going to be a knit. <laughs> so I must have either seen that on some other garment or, like, thought that up and then, I don't know wanted to test it out, but that's kind of where we're going with this. So that's my first design. The design itself, because this is a book with multiple designers, this is Norit Kayif. Kayif? Da, da, da. <laughs> so I'm excited for this design. This will be the first First thing I do, um, just because I already casted it on, I had to see what it looked like. I started doing stockinette, was kind of bored with that. I got about this far and was like, mm. <laughs> um, I think I need to size down a needle size and I'm gonna do, or I think doing the texture will make it less see-through because when it was knit stockinette, it was kind of like not super holy, but not like, super tight. I'm a loose knitter. I've said that a million times, but if you didn't know that already, loose knitter. So I'll probably size down in the needle. I'm using a 4.5 for the rib. So I think I'll use a four for the body. Um, and I'm really petite, so I don't think that will be a problem. Okay. Next. Da -da 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 -da. This is my Michigan Mackin Island bag. It's the Grand Hotel. I'm from Michigan, so here's a little promotion. Go there. It's really beautiful in the summer. If you've never been, if you've never been to Northern Michigan in the summertime, go to Northern Michigan in the summertime. It's beautiful. Um, highly recommend. Ten out of ten. <laughs> and the next top I will be making. I think I'll make this one before my tank top. I'm gonna do the Seaside Tea by Coco Amore Knitwear. Yeah, Seaside Tea Coco Amore Knitwear. It's a designer. And I've decided to do it in these two yarns that I've purchased from the Euro Shop. They were on sale at the Euro Shop, if you believe it. And they are both a reused 85% recycled cotton, 15% recycled poly and they don't have color colorway. I mean maybe here here's a number. 591495. It's probably a lot die lot number. And this one is so that was the cream. The taupe is 561885. But we'll just call them taupe and cream. I think that's accurate. And I really, really like the 
the texture that they, they kind of have, they're not super smooth, like the, the top I'm wearing. Oh, I, for, I also forgot to mention it again. We'll do that next. <laughs> like the whole episode, we'll just we'll do that next. Maybe I'll end up putting it on the end. Ah, uh, who knows? But it's not as like smooth as the top I'm wearing, or if you recognize the color, that's the same. I mean, it's a different dye lot, but it's the same. Dropped it. Classic. <laughs> and this is a little bit rougher. This one has more of a a grittiness to it. I guess toothiness is what a lot of people say. But yeah, so I think this will pair really nicely with the seaside tea. If I haven't already put a picture over here, um, I will. But the seaside tea is just a striped, like maritime obviously inspired um, t-shirt for the summer in a cotton. I think the designer also mentions cotton merino or uses cotton merino, but um, I'm just going to go with this cotton poly, whatever. <laughs> I I will say like there are some vodcasters or podcasters that I watch that very often use the recommended yarn <laughs> in patterns and I always, it always blows my mind because I'm like, I never, almost ever use the recommended yarn. One, I just like, I always buy the yarn with a general idea in my head and then I go and find a pattern or I have a general idea of what I want to do with that yarn. For example, I want to make a sweater out of it. So I have a sweater quantity or I want to make socks now that I make socks um, with an idea in mind. And then when that sweater comes along or that pattern comes along, then I use that yarn. But I never really seek out a pattern and then buy the yarn for it. It's very rare. So therefore, I never really say like, oh, let me go grab some knitting for olive merino, cotton merino. <laughs> um, I just, you know, buy stuff at the Euro shop and then later I'm like, ah, I can make a t-shirt out of that. <laughs> it doesn't always work out, I will say. Their stuff probably works out much better since it's in the recommended yarn. And mine is kind of um, a surprise, <laughs> if you will. Okay, so that's that. Um, I don't know what the needle size is or any of that stuff yet. Um, or I don't remember what it is. I think it's a 4.5 millimeter needle. Um, it could be a 5 millimeter needle or a 4. So somewhere within that range, between like a four and a five. So, and then I have to also check my gauge. So that will change too. I might check my gauge, like actually do a, maybe like a mini swatch just to make sure it doesn't look holy or like super tight. So, but if it ends up being a little looser, or a little tighter than the recommended size, I don't care. <laughs> Cause it's a t-shirt and it's for the summer. So it's gonna get like sweaty and gross and like I'm gonna wash it and it's gonna shrink or like stretch out and it's just gonna be the way that it is. And at this price point, you know what? I'm just willing to be surprised. Okay, what I'm wearing. <laughs> what I'm wearing is a tank top of my own semi-design that I <laughs> threw together last year for my birthday. So I have an August birthday and I turned 30 last year full adult and I um, was inspired by the Oslo tank is what I originally wanted to do something like that I really wanted like a thicker almost like a vest like a thicker strap up at the top and as I started knitting this I and got to the to the armholes I quickly realized that it started kind of like rolling in on itself due to the cotton and I liked the way that it looked. It's like, oh, that's cute. Maybe I won't put any ribbing on it at all. And I feel like if I had ribbing, it would look really weird. Um, and then when I got to the neckline, so once I got here and cast off for the neckline, I was like, oh, it's cute. <laughs> okay. Like, so I didn't have to add on any extra 
ribbing anywhere. The bottom does have like a very thin rib. It's a one by one rib and it's not even a cent uh, not even a, an inch high. It's probably probably about a centimeter, centimeter and a half, like if that um, wide. So it's very much just a bunch of stockinette and it's just a shapeless um, tunic like <laughs> tank top. So yeah. Also, this was also that yarn, the fresh. So. Oh, this one's not called fresh. This one's called classic. And it's a 100% uh, cotton, 115 meters to 50 grams. And it doesn't have a colorway. It just says number 603909. So yeah, that's what I used. I got it at the Euro shop. I just really enjoyed the color and I thought, why not? So that's that's how I got this. The weather's been super weird. So today I'm wearing it with like a jacket and we'll see what the day brings. The weather is like whoosh, super windy um, and then cold because of the wind. But as soon as the wind stops, it's it's warm. So yeah. Hit or miss. Now that that's out of the way. Oh, the Oslo tank. I think it's by Knits from Oslo. If you were curious, like what that original kind of plan was. But yeah, that's not this pattern. It's just what I kind of used <laughs> to, to get like cast on numbers, which just like Petit Knit, I just like cast on whatever was recommended. Used a completely different yarn, so that's on me. And it ended up way bigger than the than the size that was that was um, written. So yeah, it's much like this. Like I was like, well, well, whatever. <laughs> I just want something loose, and and that covers a lot of my shoulder. So and I did. So it's a win. It's definitely widened out though since like. It's cotton. It's, I learned that the hard way. I think like cotton really likes to stretch sideways, like horizontally. Um, and like when you wash it, it doesn't shrink up that much. Like in my experience, like it widens right back out. So I don't know if you have other experiences with cotton, I'd like to hear them. <laughs> okay, two more things and then I'll uh, like three maybe and I'll let you go. So the first one, or the first of those three, is this beautiful brown yarn that I originally purchased for my secret whip, um, which I've shared in other episodes, and I needed a certain color. I ordered some yarn. It was not the right color. Um, this is way darker than I was expecting it to be, uh, but it's nonetheless quite quite stunning so I think I'm going to do the fix giving socks by Summer Lee Design Co. So Summer Lee has a really nice DK weight I think it's like DK to worsted weight sock pattern and I haven't looked at it exactly but I'm assuming I will most definitely be able to get at least a mid um a like a mid calf you know like a like a, not not a shorty and not like a tall not a shorty not a tallie but a midi um a schmitty sock with this uh, i don't have any have anything else to say about that honestly i think the color is gorgeous it's soft enough for my feet it's not soft enough for my forehead i think it would be too itchy in the winter plus i'm a beret type of girl so I will probably not be knitting a hat out of this. Um, and I want to experiment with thicker socks. Heard they knit up really fast. Uh, right now, the Summer Sock Camp by the Crazy Sock Lady is going on. Uh, if you want to join, that's like a fun, just make along all summer, like until the end of August. And you just make, you just make socks. You don't have to finish the socks. You just, just make them. <laughs> It's kind of fun. So this will probably be my next um, summer sock camp sock. 
Crochet is also welcome. Um, the last official summer project is this. And I most definitely talked about this yarn in my wool festival video um, that I filmed in April. It was at the, I know the festival was the beginning of April. So I've had this in my stash since then. And it is just so glorious. I've had it over in this basket for what seems like ages. And I will say it's starting to get like fuzzy. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. The color really blows out when I bring it close, but you can see those little fuzzles. It's getting really fuzzy on the top. And I wonder if that's because it's 100% silk. I feel like that's something that I've heard people say about silk is that it gets like this fuzz. You definitely can't see that, but there's like fuzz on my fingers. Um, I don't mind that, but I definitely want to knit it up before the whole skein is just like felted silk, <laughs> fuzzy felted mess. So this is a hundred percent grade A mulberry silk, non superwash. It is a hundred grams to so 600 meters. And the recommended needle size is a 2 to 2.5. I will be holding them together. The color is B93. 93 is my birth year, so you could have done that math. I Honestly, because uh, I already told you I turned 30 last year. <laughs> but yeah, um, I was drawn to this color. And then we walked around the rest of the show and just couldn't stop thinking about it. It's like this brilliant like orangey copper like sunny shimmery goddess like egyptian goddess i don't even know you can just tell like the what you're seeing right now with this like shimmer that is exactly how it looks it's beautiful um the brand is really hard to pronounce so i hope i'm doing it justice it's apmezga it's and then the um oh, every time I don't I always want to say type or brand but it's not type or brand it's base the base is called uh iridanos which now I'm thinking about it is like iridescent maybe I don't know I don't know what language that is it's not German I don't think iridanos sometimes this is German it means not but <laughs> not like that so here you go Iridanos is the base, and Apmezga is the the uh, dyer. Yeah, so they were super nice. Very fun, beautiful color. And what I plan to make with that is another next to neckline tank or top without all of the stripes. So there will be uh, zero stripes. There will be, yeah, only stockinette, basically the whole thing. It's gonna, and I don't know, I don't think I'll do the Latvian braid either. I think I'll probably like cast on a couple stitches for the neck and then just have them roll over similar to like the cloud tank or something. Um, and that will be, and that will be that. I'm, I'm saving this for August, kind of. I might cast it on the end of July. Or I don't know, maybe I'll do it in August. Um, yeah, I think I'll be able to finish the whole thing in August, but the bummer is that then it's like the end of August. And so then summer's basically over. So I don't know, because I want to be able to wear it. <laughs> but I don't want to cast it on right now or first because I feel like it's too early in the summer. Right now we're in the beginning of June. Dilemma. And I don't know why, but it's just not calling to me like a July knit for some reason. <laughs> this feels to me like a July knit. This feels to me like a June knit. And this feels to me like a when I get done with my other pair of socks knit. And this feels like August. So. That is the plan. We'll see if it comes to fruition. First things first is I need to get through some of my whips. 
The Secret Whip is at a halt. I will say that now. If you watch, like I'm gonna, next week I'll have a normal vodcast video and I'll talk more about it, but I'm at, I'm at a stopping point right now with that. If you've been following along with that journey, you'll know why. Um, and my Tsuksfang, my gingham blanket, my sock, my like Halloween sherbet sock, and my whimsical 2000s jumper are like my four whips at the moment, which is at least, it's one less than last week. <laughs> and the gingham blanket is something that's going to take me ages anyways, so that's kind of been chilling in the background, hasn't gotten any work done on it. But I really want to finish my whimsical jumper so I can wear it for the summer. And I would really, I, the sock, I don't want to rush the socks, um, but I am having a lot of fun with the socks. So right now I'm, I'm working on the socks and the jumper. And now that we kind of have a weird, windy couple days where it's sort of cold, I might get some work done on my tubes fun because I don't like working on that when it's too hot. And I think once the really hot days start to come and are more consistent, I'll put that aside until the fall. Once any of those things are done or at that point where I will put it away for the fall, then I will pick up or cast on this um, basket woven tank top. Okay. The last thing I will share with you is my in-betweener box. Or if you want to call it a box a jar, <laughs> in-betweener jar. So this jar always sits by my couch and is uh, filled with yarns that are for in-between projects. So sometimes after fin finishing a project, I need like a quick win, like to follow it up, like a quick win. Otherwise I get really like oh, sloggy. And it just has a bunch of like random projects in it, mini projects like these. This one will be a washcloth. I've talked about my Horcrux washcloths before. This will be the Hufflepuff like chalice. This one's gonna be hairy. If this is not enough, because this is a rest like leftover skein, if it's not enough for Harry, then I'll either add the rest of the yellow, because I'll have leftover, rest of the yellow to make it Gryffindor, or this one's for Nagini for like that little bit of Voldemort that's like hidden inside of Harry as the Horcrux or like the green because technically I mean Harry decided that he wanted to be in Gryffindor and the Sorting Hat originally thought that he should go into Slytherin. He also could have gone to Ravenclaw just saying. Um, that's also apparently the only like non-considered house was Hufflepuff as JK Rowling said so which I thought was interesting <laughs> like Okay, why not just put them all in there? I'm a Gryffindor, if you're wondering. If you know what your Hogwarts house is, let me know. <laughs> I always find it so interesting to like know what people's Hogwarts houses are. Um, I feel like a lot of millennials, maybe like some Zennials and maybe Gen Z. I don't know if you guys are into Harry Potters, but that's kind of before your time <laughs> but if you guys are into Harry Potter and you know your Hogwarts house I'd love to hear what it is this is going to be a headband it will be a gift if I can make it into a hat I'll do a hat but so far I think it's only enough for a headband for my things and then I have a bunch of like hat stuff here so that will be a hat if I don't have enough that would be a bummer but it's okay I have supplemented yarn <laughs> And then I've talked about these before. So, oh my gosh. And I think I talked, yeah, I talked about this last week. So yeah, that's in here too. Um, and those will just be here for whenever I need a little project and they will help me get through some gifts. So I, some of these are gifts. The washcloths are for my apartment or yeah, our apartment. And, I don't live alone, <laughs> but, um, yeah, other things here, it's like getting it all to fit in here is a challenge. 
And then this is gonna be, um, this is a Daisy, Drops Daisy at Merino. And it's just a little bit left over, like in a red, vintage red color, like kind of like a cardinal red. Here it's reading more true, like cherry um, on screen, on the camera, but no, that looks really, it looks more vibrant on like what you're seeing looks more vibrant than in real life. But um, <clears throat> recently I purchased a tablecloth and it didn't really fit with like the reason I bought it. It didn't like actually fulfill that goal, I guess. It didn't go. It didn't it didn't turn out the way I thought it was going to and it didn't fit the table. So <laughs> let's just stop there. I saw it, fell in love with it, was like I absolutely want that somewhere, somehow in my life. So I bought it and was like, okay, I'll use it for this table and then it didn't work out. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, it could go on my dining room table, but I never use a tablecloth for my dining room table, so that's kind of pointless. And then I recently saw a Summerly video where she makes a quilt out of like, yeah, out of some fabric and she sews them together by doing just little ties with scrap yarn to like hold the quilt and the two sides together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the sheet, tablecloth, lay it out on the floor, fold it in half, measure that, find a quilt, like something that goes in between or a comforter, if that's cheaper, we'll see. Whatever I find, I'll put that in between and then I'll fold it in half. I'll sew like three and a half sides maybe, turn it inside out, stuff the filler in it and then I'll sew like every I'll probably measure it out and then every so many squares because it's a checkered tablecloth um, or it's a gingham tablecloth actually and like beige and cream I'll do that every so many squares and I decided what's the best use of this super wash drops merino red to tie the tie the quilt together so that's what I'll be doing with this it's, I think it'll be the perfect amount because I don't know what else to use this little bit for um, yeah I don't tend to use a lot of like super wash yarn so yeah I was considering like maybe making a bit bandana with this but I think this will be a much better use of it yeah and I really love the color so that'll be fun so those are all of my summer plans and my in-between stash. I thought that would just be a fun share. I don't need to get through all of those this summer. That would be insane. If I do, that would be, how cool would that be? But um, I don't think I will. But yeah, and my goal is to get some of those things done this summer and that quilt, I would really like to do that. That won't take any time at all. One of my friends has a sewing machine so I might enlist her help <laughs> because if I have to sew all three of those sides by hand, I can. Maybe I'll just do a blanket stitch and then flip that inside out. Or I could just do a blanket stitch on the outside. That would kind of be cute. Hmm. Maybe I'll do that. That would be fun. So maybe I'll do that too. I don't know if I'd have enough yarn to do the blanket stitch in the merino, but that would be fun. Okay, but that's it for me. Um, if you've made it this far, thanks for watching. I hope wherever you are, you're having a great time. You're having a great kickoff to the summer. You're, if you're watching that it's in the fall or the winter at some other point, I hope you're having a great fall, winter, spring, summer, wherever you're at. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.